Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I am great and a little bit behind. So sorry. Already time for the September garden tour or pastime. It's like mid-September by the time this video comes out. Just like completely escaped my mind. I was like, oh, I'll do that next week. No, no, need to get that done now. So here we are. Now in this video, in this tour, I'm going to try and be a little bit more specific with certain plants that may have been in some of my winter videos, like houseplant type videos because people have commented and be like, well, where are those plants? Well, I'll, so I'm going to try and fit them all in, but I can't go over every single plant that's out here. That would just take an eternity and it's not necessary. And uh, a lot of them get planted up and moved around during the vlogs. So they've been around, just maybe not in the garden tours. I'm going to try. I'm going to be as thorough as possible without this being incredibly long. Oh, for starters, there's my Cebu Blue Pothos. That's one people have asked about and really my Pothos in general. It is back there. It has a little bit of snail damage, but I got on top of it when that started to happen and most of the new growth is totally fine. And uh, right next to that is my Manjula Pothos, which is very pretty. And then my Marble Queen is kind of hiding out back there, but you can see it coming through and doing its thing. It's crept all the way over here into this fountain and it's doing quite well. And there's a neon pothos as well up here in the tree. And the wind kind of spun it around so its tag's not really show, or its tag is showing, which has been driving me crazy. So I need to get up there and fix that. I actually need to repot that one because I don't think it's really doing great in its soil blend that it came in. And typically, you know, you want to repot your houseplants when you bring them home, but it was doing well, so it's like, it's fine, but really, well, let me put the camera on the plant I'm talking about, sorry. Yeah, it's probably had the least amount of growth out of all of my pothos. You can see it's tucked away back there next to the fuchsia, and it's doing okay, but I think it could be doing better. All right, and over here in this palm tree planter with the pygmy date palm up here, the robolini palm, I did this planter up back in, I don't know, probably May with these beautiful white caladiums. I don't think they had a name on them, but when I potted it up, I was a little bit concerned that maybe there might be too much sun here for them. Cause you know, the more white a caladium is, typically the more shade they're going to need, but they've done great. Like really, really well. Let me come over here. One of these leaves is big on them. Really big. Look at the size of that leaf. I know there's not much to compare it to, but there's my hand. That's a really big caladium leaf. Yeah, it's been doing pretty well in there. Got a lot of growth out of it. And then over right next to that is my little pond situation thing here. It's full of mostly mollies and live bears and things like that, but there's a planter back here with some cannas in it that are getting nice and big and looking good. A black coral elephant ear tucked behind a mystery elephant ear that was sent to me with some thalias. And those thalias are getting pretty big too. They're <laughs> growing all the way up there. They haven't bloomed yet though. They're the red stem variety. The sun, it's that time of year where the angle of the sun's kind of shifting a little bit. So I have had to kind of move things around somewhat to make them work and still be able to do okay, even though it's not like super intense bright where they need it to be. It's just gotten a little bit more cloudy. You know what I'm saying? Like for example, back here at my uh, floating planter with the saracenias in them, yeah, getting a little bit shaded. I need to move them, but they're still doing well. They put on a lot of growth, but they would like more sun. Edgies are doing well. I did pull some of the hotter peppers out and there's a, a bell pepper right there. It ended up being pretty warm today. So some of the plants are kind of thirsty. It's been like the mid seventies, low eighties, <laughs> most of August. And then today it's like 94. It's supposed to stay that way for a while, which is nice because I'm personally not really ready for fall. It was a little bit of a shock to some of the plants, but here's the Eureka Palm. I repotted these um, May or early June and I kept them in the same pot, but I pulled them, cleaned the old soil out of the roots and dropped them back into their old planters and uh, it's just doing fantastic. Lots of new growth. Those trunks are looking great, nice and girthy. Haven't seen any sign of the mealybugs, but I will tell. I'm keeping a close eye on things. This has been a plant where if you don't know, the mealybugs have loved these Eureka Palms. This one I have to keep a really close eye on and really stay on top of the neem and everything with that one. My Mr. Freckles Croton, looking cute, very freckly, or not Mr. Freckles, just Freckles. I think I, I call it Mr. Freckles and that just stays stuck in my head. Lady Die Heliconia, one of many that I brought back with me from Florida back in June, has put on a lot of growth, decent amount of flowers. You know, they kind of cycle through their flowers, but through here, you can see there's 
some of the older flowers in there. I love heliconias. They're one of my favorite tropical plants. Actually, I mean, I'd say they are my favorite tropical plant, probably. They're, just, they're so pretty. Super pretty and easy to grow. Oh, and right next to that, Singapore Twist Cordolin Fruticosa. This was in my Cordolin video. It's one of my favorite Cordolins. It's not the most colorful compared to some of the others, but the shape of it is just so neat. Almost like a screw pine, how it twists. I mean, that's where it gets its name, right? The Singapore twist. Yeah, that one's doing well too. He hasn't put on a ton of growth, but it's done some growing and finished flowering and whatnot. Seems happy. Um, back here, the Prince of Orange Philodendron just put out a new leaf. Not that big of a deal. They are pretty simple to grow, right? But I still think it's fun when they put out new foliage because it's so incredibly vibrant and beautiful. One of my favorite philodendrons of like the more common ones. All right, and over here, the palm tree planters with the alacaja luteas and the white bird of paradise, they're doing very well. Everything is growing wonderfully. There's a gigantic leaf getting ready to pop open there on that white bird of paradise. But the alacaja luteas, look at them. Nice, big foliage. So I made sure to kind of preface things with, you know, the angle of the sun's changing. So some things are starting to lean and stretch a little bit. So there's some rearranging that needs to be done to move things back into a little bit more light. These alacages though, I do something a little bit differently with them. Now, those will actually be pulled probably in the next week or two. I'm gonna pull them from the planter, partially because, I mean, they're totally hiding the Edenidia palm that they're potted around. Uh, and because I need to bring them in the winter time and that big Edenidia palm goes off to a greenhouse for winter storage. So that way I, don't have to yank them right when it's time to move the Edenidia out to a greenhouse. They'll just be ready to go into my house, into my personal grow space. Since we still have some warm weather left, I need to go ahead and get those pulled, get them potted up so they'll have time to kind of put out their roots, do their thing and adjust to being, well, transplanted. You know, alacages and colacages, bananas, uh, those sorts of plants, they will throw a fit when you repot them sometimes, if you have to do too much to the roots. So I'm just saying, I wanna make sure they have plenty of time to go ahead and throw a fit before I move them inside. Throw a fit and recover, basically. This Strelitzia, this Bird of Paradise, is leaning a little bit from a couple weeks ago when that Edenidia palm got blown over in a storm and landed on it, but it's starting to straighten itself back out and do better. That heavy year of repotting palm trees out here, so I got that repotted so it's more stable now. You can see there's some fronds up there that are starting to die off and do their thing. That's totally normal. It's okay. They're a self-cleaning palm, meaning that all that foliage up there as it starts to yellow that will travel down the sheath that wraps around the crown shaft and it'll turn brown and fall off on its own. I could go in there and cut those off obviously but it's kind of hard to reach in there so I'm just like you know what in a couple days it'll fall off. I'm just gonna let it do it on its own and when it falls off I'll be able to reach it because it'll be within reach. You get it. Actually this whole area here has been doing really really well. I've especially considering I've had to pull things out quite a bit to rearrange some things and I ran some new electrical things behind everything because I have like redoing some lighting and whatnot so this whole thing has been pulled apart a few times and uh, even because of that these water lilies down here the poor water lilies they're doing okay but they ended up being a little bit shaded for like a week or so because all these other plants were pulled out and surrounding this so that wasn't ideal but they seem to be doing fine with it uh, lots of new foliage on them growing really really well in fact i'm probably gonna have to put these in something bigger next year i don't think this is going to cut it i just planted these up in like late july early august i think i don't really remember to be honest but they haven't been in here that long and they've already done a lot of growing so if they were to have been in this since like may april when it would be coming out and being set up then yeah that probably wouldn't work so that's kind of fun though. It's another project for next year, making something even bigger. Everything's the same over here with the fountain. I have had to take it apart a few times though, because again, I was moving things around. And so because of that, the hyacinths, they didn't like fully get as much water as they probably should have when I had them pulled out. Sorry if the audio goes in now and I keep smacking mosquitoes off my legs. Anyways, yeah, sorry about the formal nature. Keeping things casual today, having fun out in the garden, just talking about the plants. The hyacinths though, with the sun changing and then them having to be pulled out and then put back in and pulled out and put back in, they didn't really do much growing. They've kind of just stayed in recovery mode from being brought home from the nursery. So that's fine though. I think that they look cool there. I just wanted something green growing out the top of the fountain and they did the job just fine. Next year, there should be more with that because again, the sun has changed and then these Adenidia palms are up above everything, kind of shading things. Not kind of, totally shading things back there. But the water lilies are far enough forward that they don't seem to be affected by that shade, which is great. Same thing over here with the lotus. 
which is like only kind of in frame. Come on, Lotus. The Lotus has done a whole bunch of growing. It did flower, and uh, that was up on my Instagram when it flowered, but I think I put it in my stories. That was kind of dumb of me. I should have put it uh, on my page, so my bad. It was cute. It was just one flower. I got it late in the season. You know, one of the fun things with a Lotus is the little pod they leave on them. That pod's done. It turned, and it's drying now, so not much to see there, but it was really cute when it was standing upright and being a cute lotus pod really tiny though really really tiny and down here i have all my little alakajas the akanawa silvers that i repotted in a video i think it might have been a vlog a while ago but they're all adjusting well even the one that i thought may not make it because it was all white it did end up dying back some but it flushed out with all new growth kind of hard to see because it's tiny but it has recovered and but not new growth that was the goal so they're doing well too might be the theme with everything here it's, it's doing well the plants the garden everything seems good nice and happy a little bit of stretching just because it's that time of year happens every year right the angle of the sun changes I mean, i guess that depends on your latitude but where i live the angle of the sun changes so much in the late summer into fall that everything that was getting full sun is like eh not so much, and they have to reach out for it a little bit more. Oh, and then here's the Peperomia obtusophilia. I can't take you to where I keep it, because that's an area that's like full of planters and things that haven't come out yet, but there it is, doing well. Haven't had to do anything with it. I mean, it's still in its nursery pot. It's just, they just grow. It's fine. Like, I don't even touch it. It's just a happy plant all on its own, which is why I love Peperomia so much. So simple. Such cute, happy foliage. I did fertilize it, so I guess there is that. I have been using um, about every two weeks when I fertilize everything else. I fertilize this one with a half strength of just the all-purpose fertilizer. And I have given it a little bit of tomato fertilizer. The succulents seem to appreciate that. Everything is so thirsty. They've been watered, just very thirsty. It is hot out. Not that I'm complaining. I love the heat. Everything over here, again, doing well. None of the hibiscus are in flower, unfortunately. They're all kind of resting. That's what hibiscus do, you know? They flower profusely, and then they have to chill for a while. So that's what that's doing. All my hibiscus are sleeping. Wish they had been in bloom for the garden tour, but... Uh, not yet. They'll be blooming again soon. Alexander Palm still throwing out a flower there. It's in fluorescence. It's looking neat. I can't wait for that to open up. And then down here, the gingers, while a lot of them are done blooming, there are a whole bunch that I haven't even started yet. It was a late year for them. The spring was kind of wonky here, so there's still a lot going on with them. Yeah, those are the Hedichium, uh, I always want to say Fiesta, Flaming Torch. I was concerned that they weren't even going to come back for me after the bad winter that we had, but they came back just took them a long time there wasn't a lot of growth and it wasn't until probably midsummer I would say that they started to put up all this other growth here which I'm excited about it's not <laughs> not quite where I want all that new growth to be right in the middle of the ferns but it's better than the plants dying off as much growth as I can get out of them this year the better oh and the yucca ristrata I did an update on this in one of my last vlogs so I'm not going to say too much but it has grown very well taken off and it is really, I mean, it's doing great. It's one of my favorite plants out here. I love the blue foliage. It's got a nice girthy trunk on it. It's a really healthy and happy plant. It got repotted back in mm, March, February, something like that, I want to say. And it didn't have any roots on it. So it's rooted itself out, flush out with new growth. That's what I like to see. I really like looking right into the middle of this thing. It's not going to show that well on camera, but with a nice, healthy yucca ristrata or any trunked yucca there should almost be what looks like a ball in the center of the plant that all the foliage is coming out of and uh, that's kind of how you gauge its girthiness right that's kind of a weird way to put it but basically i want to make sure that everything that's coming out of here is going to be consistent with its previous trunk and it, it is so all good this great big croton's doing fantastic it struggled a little bit back in july i think it just kind of needed to acclimate to the sun but it's adjusted it's put on lots of new growth i mean it's a croton so not a ton you know they don't grow a lot in a single season but it flowered it did its thing and then went back into growing so i'm happy with it it's hard to find these in a big size that's why i nabbed it up when i could find it in a 15 gallon size pot i don't see them that big up this far north very often i'm in st louis if you're new here and aren't familiar with the things in this yard and this garden all these tropicals i need to say this at the beginning of the vlogs i'm so sorry all these tropicals everything that's out here there are some exceptions like the ginger stays out and whatnot but for the most part all these plants get moved inside into my garage or they go off into a greenhouse during the winter time i get that question with almost every single garden torch is what do you do with your tropicals during the winter time where do you live and i always forget because you know these only happen once a month so it's easy to forget 
uh, to keep things updated like that. So no, all this is temporary. It's just things that are staged and set up for the spring, summer, and early fall. And when temperatures drop, they go inside. Like I said, uh, not everything. This ginger, the Hedichium Flaming Torch, it's rated as hardy zone 7B and up. I'm in 6B, we're on the border of 6B, 6A and it's come back for me every single year. This year, I wasn't sure if it was going to happen because we had those lows where we got to 13 degrees below zero Fahrenheit, but it still came back. I've just put a, I cut them down in the fall, put a big bag of mulch on them, that's it. And then all this new growth happens every year. By the way, it is so sunny, I cannot see my viewfinder. It was cloudy when I started. Hopefully this is in focus. Look at how big this baju banana has gotten. I have had this baju here, pardon the pool cleaning equipment. There have just been storms constantly, so all this stuff's still laying out. I've had a baju, that's the Japanese fiber banana, the most cold hardy, debatedly the most cold hardy banana you can put out in the garden. I've had this one here for like four or five years. It's never got more than a few feet tall, but this year it's like all the way up to the roof of the first floor. It looks really cool there. I'm really happy with how much it's grown. I don't know what changed between last year and this year, but it's done a lot. This is a different one. I shouldn't have transitioned over to the same plant. I'm so sorry, that's confusing. Yeah, so I have the one clump here and then I have the other one all the way. Well, not all the way. It's right, it's right there, you can see it. But yeah, those have been here for years. They're doing really well. They didn't get quite as big as I'd hoped they would this year. Why are they always so thirsty when I film? They look beautiful unless I turn the camera on. Like I said, it's hot though. Yeah, it's quite toasty, so that's what that's about. Typically, they're not looking all thirsty like that. Everything's been watered, just one of those days. The Bikini Teeny Colocages are doing fine though. Always doing fine, they're plant thugs. Put these in your garden. If you have trouble growing something, you want something tropical looking, they're cold hardy and they just, they're almost obnoxious. I find them all over my garden. See, I have them lining my garden over here and uh, while it's neat having a tropical type plant that sort of volunteers itself, it can get a little bit annoying because I'm constantly plucking these up all over the place. The thing is though, sometimes it's not until the next year when I start finding all of them popping up. So I guess they get reseeded and come back later in the late spring, early summers when they start to show up. And since we're talking about Kalakajas, look at this beast. That's the Thai giant. It got planted kind of late. It would actually probably be double the size normally. Just didn't see them for sale until later in the year, so they didn't get as much time in the ground as I would like them to, but they still have some growing time left in them. The newest leaf it threw out is smaller than the others, but we had a cool spell that lasts about three weeks, so not surprised about that at all. Sometimes the cooler temperatures can make smaller leaves. Same thing with um, like hibiscus, really cooler temperatures. You might notice so flower size changes. You get cute little flowers, supposed to be really big ones. Kind of the same thing here with the Kalakaja or Lukokaja. They changed the name Lukokaja. Then I have my other Alokajas back here that I don't recall the name of because they didn't come with a name, but those were overwintered in the garage last year and I throw them in the ground and they've taken off and gotten pretty big, but the tie giants kind of block them a little bit. Sorry about that. Sun impatience have gotten really big over here too. These were, I think they're just the neon pink sun patients. They're probably a good 30 inches tall right now. Doing really well. They're a nice no fuss annual, as long as, I mean, you have the right climate for them. So simple, bright pop of color, and they're cheap. And the, they help attract the pollinators in, but I don't see the pollinators mess with them too much. But sometimes the butterflies do hang around them. Not so much the bees though. And the hummingbirds will like drop by and be like, hey, how do you taste? And they're like, meh, and they leave. Berm's still good, hedge is still there, everything. Normal, nothing to report there. Probably won't be much to report on that for a year or so. You can kind of see there's some new growth coming out on some of the laurels, which is fun and exciting. I wasn't really expecting them to do much this year. I figured they just kind of sit around and next year I'd start to see some action. Now, same thing with the ostrich ferns. I put a several of these in this berm here. This variety is called the king. It's supposed to get a little bit bigger. Supposedly it'll be more heat tolerant. I don't, won't really know much about that until next year, but so far, they're flushing out with new growth and seem to be enjoying the spot. And over here, the ZZ plant, I need to repot it. It's kind of outgrown its pot, but it's doing well. New leaves, new growth, always a good thing. Oh, and then here's one I especially wanted to make sure to talk about, because I always forget about this when the garden tours. My ficus lorata, the fiddly fig. This is that one, it's a standardized one, and I'm, you know, it depends on how long you've been subscribed and how many videos you've watched, but back um, last October, we had a very bad, unexpected frost, and it hit this lorata, and I ended up losing like a couple of adenidia palms from it and a few other small tropicals. This defoliated completely and I talked about it in one of my vlogs that December where I did some things with it and 
whatnot, but it's bounced back very well, really well. It's got lots of new growth. Remember, this was just sticks a few months ago, so that's great, and I haven't touched it. That's one of the things with the Loratas. I have noticed that I do best with them when I just leave them alone. I mean, make sure to water them, obviously, that's important, but otherwise, I don't mess with it too much. It's fertilized just like everything else does, which really, it's, it's a ficus, so it should be getting a half strength, but during the summer, I've just kind of been giving a splash when I'm fertilizing the other plants. Uh, though not ideal. It seems to be doing okay with that and responding well to it. I do tend to dilute my fertilizers fairly heavily regardless just to be safe because I like to fertilize more frequently than just like occasionally. So when you fertilize more frequently you need to cut back the concentration, you know? That's probably why there haven't been any issues with like leaf burn or anything, but you know with ficus, any ficus, it's a good idea. Cut your fertilizer back. Or dilute it, I should say. They will burn. They burn very, very easily. Okay, and then the little Serenity Garden area. That is so infested with mosquitoes. It's far from serene. There's nothing serenity about this area. You just get eaten alive over here. I've been doing some things with like peppermint oil, and that's helping a little bit, but I've just, I've been trying to avoid any harsh chemicals this year, so... Uh, the mosquitoes have been kind of intense and it rained pretty much all summer like tons and tons and tons of rain which you know mosquitoes just love back here i have my monstera this is the thai constellation it is doing so well in this spot i always talk about how i have a different spot that i usually move this to but it's just doing so well i didn't see a reason to move it it seems happy right so it's like if it ain't broke don't fix it so i've just left it over here. It's a little bit unfortunate because I haven't been coming down this area as much as I normally would, like I said, because of the mosquitoes. Still get to come over here and see it, you know, I mean, I, I check on my plants every day, so, but I'm not spending a ton of time with it. Like, as we're speaking, there's, I'm just trying to swat a mosquito away from my face. <laughs> has about eight new leaves on it, or I should say five new leaves, had three when I brought it out, so that's an awful lot of growth in just a few months. Fantastic, and I'm really happy that the variegation started to pick back up on this leaf up here just because it was getting kind of diluted and the Thai constellations they don't really revert but I was still like I'd like you to get colorful again so the repotting and everything that happened last winter with it seems to have gone over well it's accepted it and taken off like really taken off probably about I'd say maybe five and a half six feet tall I want to get it trained on something it's I haven't done that. I need, I need to do it. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Over here, one of my favorite alocages. Still doing wonderful. That foliage is just so pretty. And the undersides of that foliage. Look at that. Isn't that just stunning? Isn't that just gorgeous? That like metallic purpley sheen to it. Uh, people have suggested names to me on it. I don't know. It might be a plum bay or something like that. Or like princess. I don't know. It's just pretty. Uh, if something doesn't come with a label, even if I'm pretty sure what it is. Unless it's something really simple like a hydrangea or a pothos, but with the alakajas, there are so many different types. I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna just call you pretty. You can just be pretty. And then my favorite part of the late summer garden, look at the hydrangea. Isn't it just stunning? Those flowers are glowing. If you go back to the July garden tour and even the August garden tour, these flowers, they start off white. And it's the strawberry vanilla is a variety. It's a hydrangea paniculata. They like more sun. And these are standardized, though they're weeping so much you can't really see the trunks on them. But yeah, they start off nice and white, sort of creamy colored flowers. And then they transition to this vibrant, absolutely just beautiful pink that's flushed in there with the white flowers. They're so pretty. I just adore these hydrangeas so much. And yeah, that's one of those plants where by the October garden tour, won't really be much to see there. The flowers are going to start to kind of brown and they'll start to die off. And it's still pretty, but it's just not the same. They've kind of peaked depending on what kind of flowers you like. I think these are stunning and the white ones are pretty too. When they're in the middle, I'm not as crazy about them. But in the middle, I mean like when they're sort of transitioning between the white and the pink, sometimes they can look a little bit funky. But right now, oh, they're in their full glory. And the pollinators really enjoy these. There are bees all over these plants in the morning time. Also, those are right behind me. So pardon all that noise. That's what that was about. Dolphins get kind of noisy when they're right behind the microphone. And then the other hydrangea tree, I worked on this in one of my last vlogs. So that this one right here was the one that just got absolutely saturated. We had like two and a half inches of rain in like an hour and two days prior to that we had had like an inch of rain it was just it was too much and the plant was like no no i just i'm gonna die now i cut back all of its foliage i cleaned up the root ball and stuck it back in the pot into a new soil medium that's going to drain better 
and hopefully it'll flush back out. The wood and everything is still nice and flexible, so I think it's gonna be okay, but it's still too soon to tell. It did get repotted into fresh soil for anyone who was wondering. So it's in a soil blend now that's draining better. The old one, old soil mix, I think just got kind of old, and I noticed that there was like some mud that had collected under the pot that was keeping it from draining very well. So that's about all that can be done just to be safe, you know, gotta do that. The bungee cords are, well, they were helping to hold the thing up. I guess I can take those off now. Fire to all that rain, it looked like this and was a little bit heavy and leaning forward so it staked up, but yeah, I don't think I need to do that now. Oh, and another favorite of mine for the late summer, fall type stuff, the Lesbideza. It has just started blooming and it's looking glorious, just gorgeous. The bees and butterflies and hummingbirds are constantly over here and on this plant. I actually have wanted to move this several times, but just haven't because the pollinators like it so much. It needs to grow over a wall because it's almost a trailer and it's habit. Well, it is a trailer. It tends to kind of grow up and spill down. So it, that's where it needs to be. There are upright varieties, just not the one I have. And you can see there though, it just cascades with these beautiful little pink flowers. It's one of my favorite plants out here this time of year. And it's just gotten started. This is going to have so many more flowers on it within a week or two. You can see like up here, Still lots of buds left to open up on there. All right, I think that pretty much does it. There's the September garden tour of the backyard and what's been going on with everything. Not a ton of changes this time of year, but it's still kind of fun to see what progress there has been. Oh, the palm trees, hold on. In each garden tour, I like to go over the palm trees. The queen palms, there's one on each side of the steps, pardon the pizza, a friend of mine was here and left that in the pool. Um, uh, petunias did okay, uh, you know, if you watch my vlogs, I have a Labrador who likes to dry himself off on these pots. He just kind of runs around in circles and tears them to shreds. So they'd be looking a little bit better if it weren't for that. And this year has just been so heavy with the rain. I'm actually kind of surprised that none of them rotted off as it is. You can see down there with that mule palm, both of them on each side, each side, side to side there. Those are doing a little bit better. Petunia wise because Tucker my older dog doesn't run around on them quite as much, but Yeah, it's just not quite what I was hoping for this year But uh, I mean what can you do? He's an old dog So I just kind of let him get away with what he wants <laughs> He can dry himself off on the petunias if that's what he wants to do. It's fine They've held up fairly well to having a Labrador spinning in circles and rubbing himself all over them Oh, yeah, that's the update with those uh, the petunias. I could go ahead and give them a big cut back I might do that I actually just like cut them back by 50% because they'll keep going with the cooler weather That's coming up like in late September, maybe even not until October. I don't know But um, they'll need to flush out with new growth. I probably should have done it like two weeks ago The season is just like everything's a little bit behind this year So I don't know what fall is going to be like I'll go ahead and give those a cut back probably 50% of the way So they'll flush back out from the top and get bushy again. They'll appreciate that. And these are queen palms. So while a lot of the other tropicals are going to have to go inside as soon as temperatures start to get pretty cool out here, these can stay out for quite a while. I don't usually move my queen palms in until we start to see some fairly heavy frost. Same thing with the mule palms that are down there on the other end. You know, they're part queen palm. That's part of their makeup. So that would be a good reason to go ahead and give these petunias a cut back because they do actually still have a decent amount of time left out here. So I'll probably do that. Okay, that's pretty much everything. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. Like I said before, I started talking about the queen palms, right? Uh, anything I forgot about? Like I said, it's so hard to remember everything. There's so many plants out here, but if there's something specifically that somebody wanted an update to, let me know and I'll post it up on my Instagram or make sure that it's in a vlog, something like that. Like I said, I just, I keep thinking of new things I forgot to talk about, but it just, it would take forever to cover everything, right? So yeah, that's why, just let me know if there's something specifically and not just like, big picture now make sure to like i said put it up on instagram that's where i'm the most active my social media is linked down below in the description of the video or i'll put it up in a vlog and there's still a whole nother garden tour there'll be an october garden tour and i uh, am working on some electrical things and some lighting things i've been saying it all summer i am going to do a nighttime tour with things lit up I uh, just, I, like I said, the electrical stuff. It's happening though, so it should be fairly soon. All right, you get the picture. Hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. Makes a big difference for the videos and for the channel, so thank you, I appreciate it. And subscribe as well, and hit that notification bell upload multiple times a week, and that way you'll know when new videos come out. <laughs> I hope everybody's having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye. -bye.